Hey, New Life Church, excited to be in the book of Philippians today with you. Picking up in chapter three, verse 17, if you wanna grab your Bibles and read along with me, Paul writes, brethren, join in following my example and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. And he's gonna contrast his example and, and the example of the apostles and other disciples with the example of the world. Verse 18, for many walk of whom I often told you and now tell you even weepingly, are weeping, I tell you that, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their minds on earthly things. That's important. Verse 20 says, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory by the exertion of the power that he has, even to subject all things to himself. So today I wanna to talk to you about heaven. I wanna to talk to you about our citizenship. Where are we from? Where are we going? Who are we? Paul explains it in this passage. It's a beautiful passage and he's challenging us to make sure that we uh, set our mind where it should be because there's a lot of people in this world who have a pattern, who have an example that are trying to get us to follow things that are not of the Lord. And he said, man, th these are the things that they're gonna do. They're gonna be led by their appetite, their glories and their shame. But, but the thing that's really interesting, the last thing he says in verse 19 is that they set their minds on earthly things. That's not the case for us as Christ followers. Why? Because our citizenship isn't on earth. We're not from here. We're aliens and strangers of this world. We don't belong here. We're not going to live here for eternity. We are going to be in heaven. God's going to redeem us. And, and so this world is not our home. So how do we get to that place where uh, we, we're focused on what's really true of us, where we really are from and, and where we're gonna spend eternity. I wanna give you a couple things today. Number one, uh, we have to take responsibility for directing our minds. In Colossians chapter three, verse two, Paul says, set your mind on the things above and not on the things that are on earth. I don't know about you, but a lot of times my mind will begin to wander, right? You just go along your, your day and then squirrel, something happens and, and your mind just goes in, in all these different directions. And, and you know, our world is set up with so many distractions today. We've got computers in our pocket and there's ads popping up all the time. And, and there's just constant inputs happening in our life and our minds have I've literally been trained to, to focus on lots of different things at once. You know, and we want to call it multitasking and, you know, we're driving and texting and searching the internet and listening to all these things. And, and we're called in Colossians and in Philippians here to set our mind. In other words, to take responsibility for our thoughts, for our minds. I love what an old author, his name is Richard Baxter, and he lived in the 17th century England. He, he wrote a, a book called The Saints Everlasting rest. And, and one of the things he challenges us in that book with is this thought. Now bear with this language, it's, it's kind of old school, but he says, hast thou no command of thy own thoughts? In other words, aren't you responsible for what you're thinking? Is not the subject of your meditations a matter of choice, especially under this conduct of thy judgment? In other words, what, whatever you think and meditate on, you're the one who gets to decide that, right? And, and, and he says, surely God gave thee with your new, new nature, like we have a new nature in Christ and God's given us some power to govern our thoughts. Are you again becoming a slave to your depraved nature? Question mark. And then he makes this statement, resume thy authority. And he's challenging us as believers, say, listen, we're called to take authority over what we think about. And, and the enemies of the cross, they're the ones whose minds are set on earthly things. We're called to set our minds on heavenly things. Why? Because we're citizens of heaven. Here's the second thing we've got to understand. We need to learn the art of talking to ourselves. Well, Corey, isn't that the first sign of insanity? <laughs> no, actually it's the first sign of spiritual maturity. When you learn to talk to yourself 
Uh, in fact, all throughout uh, the word, we see David, Psalm 42, talking to his own soul. Soul, why are you in despair? Why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him for the help of his presence. David knew how to talk to himself. Martin Lloyd-Jones wrote, have you realized that most of your unhappiness in life is due to the fact that you are listening to yourself instead of talking to yourself? See, so often we listen to our own feelings, we listen to what our depraved heart says to us, what, what our mind is wandering off with, um, instead of talking to ourselves, instead of setting our minds and telling ourselves based on God's word and his truth and his promises, what's really true and where our hope should be placed. We've gotta learn how to talk to ourselves based on this book and who God says that we are. And here's the last thing I wanna encourage you to do is take a walk. Take a walk. Well, how does that help me? Uh, my citizenship is in heaven. How does that help me be focused on the right things? Well, I want you to take a walk every day in the new Jerusalem. That's another thing Richard Baxter says. I hope you will value this heavenly life and take one walk every day in the new Jerusalem. What he means is every day we should spend time in our minds thinking about what heaven's going to look like, what heaven's going to be like, what we're going to experience in heaven, who we're going to meet, what we're going to do. How, how it's gonna be like with God. This is a great thing we, we do as a family. Recently, I asked all of our kids, hey, what are you most looking forward to in heaven? And I wrote down some of their answers because it was pretty comical, uh, some of them. Some of them were really sweet. One, one daughter said, I I'm excited to see my friends and family. Another daughter said, uh, I'm looking forward to meeting certain Bible characters. And we started thinking about all the Bible characters we wanna meet. Uh, another uh, child said, I wanna see the streets of gold and make new friends. Another one said, I, I wanna play football with Drew Brees. I'm like, man, that would be fun, me too. Uh, another one said, uh, I wanna see all the new colors and animals. And then of course we closed it out by asking the question all of us struggle with, will you poop in heaven? I don't know the answer, my kids wanted to know, but I'm not smart enough to figure that out. Okay, so how do we set our mind on things above? Well, again, those three things, we have to take responsibility for directing our thoughts. We've got to learn the art of talking to ourselves, and, and then take a walk every day in the streets of heaven. Think about what it's going to be like. Spend time meditating on things above and not just on the things of this earth. God bless you.